Hi guys, today I am going to discuss uh, one of the very important areas of decision making. We call it relevant costing. Guys, this concept is so important. Let me tell you, once you understand this concept of relevant costing, it will change the way you think and the way you make decisions. Hi, I am the Commerce Specialist. Welcome to my channel where you will find videos covering various learning outcomes of professional certifications and qualifications, including life-changing business ideas and hacks. Guys, one important gentle and humble request to all of you. I have checked in my YouTube analytics that out of let's say 100% people who watch my videos, 75% are not yet subscribed. So I request you to please subscribe the channel and support my channel. Thank you so very much. Let's start with relevant costing. When we take decisions, there are many factors and variables which we consider. Some of them are irrelevant for the decision, some of them are relevant. So our focus is to remove the irrelevant aspects, irrelevant factors, which unnecessarily confuse us. And our aim is to focus only on the relevant factors. We call them the relevant cost. Let me give you an example. So by now everybody knows that I teach. So students from all over the world, they contact me for different courses. So when I tell them how much it's going to cost, so most of the students are telling me, oh, sir, you are so expensive. Now the reason is, that is my relevant cost. I have certain scenarios, certain circumstances, certain opportunities available. Based on that, when I make a decision, I only include my relevant cost. For example, if you compare two teachers, one would be charging you, let's say, 2000 US dollars, somebody would be charging you 200 US dollars, and somebody would free even because it all depends upon their circumstances and the relevance of the various uh, variables. So let me give you few tips. Whenever you are making a decision, there are certain costs which are very much relevant to the decisions and there are certain costs which are not at all relevant to the decisions. For example, any amount which you have spent in the past is considered sunk cost and it is never relevant to a decision. For example, if I need to change the tires of my car, the car I have purchased four years back for 20,000 US dollars. Now, when I'm taking a decision to change the tires, that 20,000 US dollar is no more relevant. Why? Because it has already been incurred. The decision is relating to the tires. So what is more important is what type of tires I'm gonna buy, what is their cost, what is their safety, what is the durability, so on and so forth. How much I purchase the car is irrelevant because whether I replace the tires or not, I'm not going to get that 20,000 US dollars back. So please keep in mind, any amount spent in the past is not relevant to the decision and we call them sunk cost. Another important factor we have to keep in mind when we are looking at decisions and especially relevant cause is a cost which is common to two dis different options or two different decisions. For example, if I need to take a house on rent. So if both the house are in the same locality, the rent is the same. So rent is never a relevant cost. Why? Because whether I go for option A or option B, house A or house B, the rent is let's say 2000 US dollars. What is relevant to the decision is something which is not common to both the options. For example, uh, house A comes with a reserved car parking for which I have to pay 200 US dollars extra. So otherwise rent is the same. So I'm not looking at rent because whether I go for option A or B, I have to pay the same rent. So now rent becomes an irrelevant cost. What is relevant is the extra I'm paying for the parking. Another important point for relevant costing is all those costs which are incremental are relevant to our decision. We also use a word out of pocket cost, which means if I go with decision X, how much money would I have to pay? What would be my incremental cost? So please remember, relevant costs are all those costs which are incremental to that specific decision. And any cost which has already been incurred is irrelevant. So these are some basics of relevant costing. Now I've got two questions for you. 
in which uh, I am going to discuss the various aspects of relevant cost, especially relating to material, labor and overheads. And let me tell you once again, it's going to change the way you think. So if you look at this question, what is happening here is a customer is willing to pay 22,000 US dollars for a special job. The job requires the following material, material A, B, C and D. Now the data which is given for all the four material is kilograms required to complete the job. Material A will require 1000 kilograms to complete the job. If you want to do the job, we need 1000 kilograms of material B, 1000 kilograms of material C and 200 kilograms of material D. What we have in stock already is nothing for material A. 600 kilograms of material B is already in stock. 700 kilograms of material C is in stock and 200 kilograms of material D is in stock. What else is given to us? The historical cost. Historical cost means when these materials were purchased earlier. How much did we pay for them? So when material B was purchased, because we have it in stock, when we purchased it, it cost us $2 per kilogram. Material C is also in stock. It was purchased earlier for $3 per kilogram and material D was purchased for $4 per kilogram. Then we have NRV or you can call it, uh, then we have NRV which is known as net realizable value which means what if we don't use the material in this contract then what happens? We are going to sell them. So what we have in stock already if we sell this material B which we have 600 kilograms in stock will be sold for 2.5 kilograms, 2.5 dollars per kilogram. Material C which we already have 700 kilograms in stock, if we want to sell we can sell it for 2.5 dollars per kilogram and material D would be sold finally for 6 dollars per kilogram. The last column is replacement cost, means the current purchase cost. What if, if we have to buy these materials right now how much material A is going to cost us? $6 per kilogram. Material B, 3, 4 and material D is going to cost us $9 per kilogram. Now, there are some additional information given to us based on which we will decide whether a particular material or the cost is relevant or irrelevant. So let's have a look at material B. It says material B is in regular use for every other job means material B is one of the material which we use for any contract not only for this special contract for any future contract as well. Material C and D are in stock due to overbuying and there is no other use for material C which means if material C is not used in this contract it would be probably sold. Material D can be used for a substitute of 300 units of material E which is not in stock Material E is currently costing us $5 per kilogram. What we need to understand here is, should we accept the special order for which customer is willing to pay us $22,000? But for doing that, we need to understand what is our relevant cost. Not just cost, relevant cost. So let's take them one by one. And I'm explaining this also. So if we look at material A, we have, in order to complete the special job, we need 1000 kilograms. Do we have anything in stock? No. That means we have to purchase. So if 1000 kilograms are purchased, the current replacement cost is $6. So for material A, it is 1000 uh, kilograms we need. And it will be purchased for $6. So the cost would be 6000. Let's talk about material B. Material B, to complete the contract, we need 1000 kilograms, only 600 kilograms are in stock. And what is said here for material B? Now, this is very important. It says material B is in regular use for every other job. Now, here you need to understand, whenever the question tells you that material X or Y or Z is in regular use, there is a rule of thumb. If a material is in regular use, the relevant cost is the current replacement cost, which means we have to buy this every now and then. So if you use it for the special job, for any X potential new job, we still have to buy. So if the material is in regular use, the relevant cost is always the current replacement cost, which is the current price of the material, which is $3.
So I'm going to take 1000 kilogram, ignoring what I have in stock, whether I have it in stock or not, I'm going to charge 1000 kilograms directly with the replacement cost, which is three. So this is going to give me 3000. Coming to material C. Now it says clearly here that material C and D are in stock due to overbuying in the past. And material C has no other use, which means if we don't use material C in this special contract, we are not going to use it for any other contract. So what option do we have? Either to use it in this contract, and if you are not using in this contract, we would just sell material C. And if we do that, it will be sold for 2.5 kilograms. Which means, if we never had this special contract, what we would have done with material C? We would have just sold it. So if we had sold it, we would have got 2.5 dollars per kilogram. So if you're not selling, we are using it in the new contract, at least we need this much money. Now one thing you should understand, why the historical costs are not relevant? Because it's a sunk cost, we have already paid it, whether we purchased it, too expensive, too cheap, that's history. What we need to look at is, in this contract we need 1000 kilograms, 700 we already have. And if we don't use the 700 kilograms in this contract, what is the next best use? We would have sold it. So that net realizable value or the scrap value of material C is a relevant cost for the units we have in stock. So for material C, 700 units which we have, kilograms which we have in stock, the relevant cost is if you don't use it in this contract we are going to sell this for this so multiply by 2.5 dollars and obviously we need 1000 kilograms 700 we have we have already taken the relevant cost another 300 kilograms will be purchased and when we purchase this the replacement cost or the current purchase price is four dollars so this will be 1200 dollars and this would be 700 into 2.5 will be 1750. Now for material D, it is very interesting. Some additional information is given. It says material D was, is in stock because it was uh, a result of overbuying in the past. That's okay. But material D can be used to substitute for 300 kilograms of material E, which is not in stock and obviously used for other projects. Material E currently costs us $5 per kilogram, which means this 200 kilograms of material D we can use as a substitute for material E, which will cost us this much. If you take it as a substitute for material E, this 200 is can be substituted for 300 kilograms of material E which cost us 5 per kg so which gives us 1500 so this means material D is as good as material E which would cost us 1500 and what if we don't use material D for this contract at all if was a result for overbuying then probably this 200 if you're not using for E we would sell it for six dollars Otherwise, the NRV for material D is 200 into 6, which will give us 1200. Now, if you compare these two, we have to take the higher one. Why? Because if we take 1200 here for this contract, that means for any other contract, we have to pay 1500 to buy material E and complete that other contract. So if I have something worth 1500, and if I'm using for this special contract, at least I should get 1500 for material D. So that in future, if I even if I have to buy material E, I already have 1500. So I'm going to take the higher of this, which is 1500. So if I total all these up, I get 13,450. And this is my relevant cost. How much the customer is willing to pay us? 22,000. So it's very much feasible for us. Let me tell you, this is our relevant cost. For any competitor, it could be more or high. The aim is not 
just to quote the minimum price. The aim is to quote the price which is relevant for us. In other words, how much it costs to us. Whatever costs to us is not the same what it costs to anybody else. If a product costs X to us, that does not mean the same product or raw material will cost X to somebody else. We have to quote looking at our relevant cost. The aim is not to quote the highest possible price or the lowest possible price. The aim is to quote the relevant cost so that we don't miss anything. Now in the next uh, question, I'm going to discuss the relevant cost not only for material but for labor and overheads as well. So have a look at this. It says Hamza LLC prepared an estimate for a job. Details are below. Direct material which is steel 600,000. Direct labor which is wires 100,000. Direct labor, skilled direct labor 3,000 hours at the rate of 100 per hour 300,000. Direct labor unskilled 10,000 hours at the rate of 40 per hour 400,000. Variable and fixed overheads were 150 each. Total cost was 1700,000 and the company built the customer by adding 20% markup which makes it 2.04 million and this quote was rejected. So what happened when the quote was rejected, we reviewed the quote. Did we make any mistake and probably if you were a management accountant, expert in decision making, forecasting, budgeting and you have an understanding of relevant cost, you found these important additional information. The very first one says skilled labor is short in supply and earn a contribution of $10 per hour. So what I'm going to do here in this, I'm going to re-estimate applying the principles of relevant costing and you're going to see what difference it makes. So let's take them one by one. It says direct material steel is for 600,000. Anything given for steel? Yes, number five. If you look at this, it says steel is in stock and cost it 600,000. It is in regular use and replacement cost is just 250,000. So I'm re-estimating. I'm going in this order, direct material steel. I'm going to look at what is the relevant cost and whether it was taken correctly here. It says here in number 5, steel was in stock and cost 600. Now this 600 is the historical cost. It is a sunk cost. What we need to look at, since it is in regular use and its replacement cost is 250, so for us the relevant cost is 250,000. That's it. Not 600,000. Then it talks about wires. We have taken on top 100,000. What it says about wires? Number three, it says wires are in stock and have no other use. If not used, will be scrapped at a cost of 10,000. Now, this is very important. We have taken the cost of wires 100,000 because this is a historical cost. When we purchase it was for 100,000. If we don't use it for this special contract, you know what we were going to do? we were going to pay somebody 10,000 just to remove the wire because it's too much, it is occupying space. So please understand, it's not that we are selling the wire and we are getting some scrap value. Actually, if we don't use the wire for this contract, we would have to pay a disposal company 10,000 just to remove it from our uh, premises. So, when I take direct material wire, actually it's a saving for us. If I use it in this contract, I don't have to pay 10,000 to anybody to remove it. So it's a saving for me. It's not a cost, it's a saving. It's a saving, that's why I'm putting that in brackets. Costs are without brackets here. Let's go to the third one. Skilled labor hours. Let's see what happens here. Direct labor, skilled. We need 3,000 hours and we are paying labor 100 per hour. And it says here in the first additional information, skilled labor is short in supply and earns a contribution of $10 per hour. Here, please pay attention. Which means 
at the moment our skill labor are 100% busy working on some other job if we want to do this contract we have to move them divert them from an existing job and ask them to complete this job if we do that from the existing job we will lose a contribution of $10 per hour so what is the relevant cost of diverting them and asking them to work on a special job have a look at it for skilled labor, obviously, if they, if, even if we divert them from the job, we need 3,000 hours and we have to pay them 100 per hour. So 3,000 hours and the labor cost is 100 per hour. So that obviously we have to pay them, even if we divert them. Whether they work there or here, we have to pay them the labor cost, right? But the other thing is the lost contribution lost contribution from their existing job since they will be diverted 3000 hours they are working there and we are losing a contribution of 5 that we need it here we will build this special job because we are moving the labor if they are working we have to pay the labor the wages but also the lost contribution on the existing job if we lose if, if they leave the existing job and they come here we are losing 10 per hour so for 3000 hours the contribution is ten dollars actually so that is thirty dollars then coming to unskilled labors previously we built the client for ten thousand hours at the rate of forty what does it says for unskilled labor number two it says six thousand idle hours are available for unskilled labor due to cancellation of a recent contract so idle labor hours means they are already paid for that we don't have to pay them anymore okay so if we have idle labor hours they cost us nothing additionally there is no incremental cost for addition idle labor hours so when i go for direct labor unskilled 6000 hours which is idle cost me nothing but obviously we need 10000 hours so 4000 hours obviously we will pay the workers how much at the rate of 40 so this would be 160,000. Coming to variable overheads, it says variable overheads are accurately reflected. So let's take variable overheads. These are properly taken, 150. Before also it was accurately reflecting and then fixed overheads. It says fixed overheads includes allocation of head office overheads. Specific overheads for this job is just 20,000. Now you understand that in most of the cases what happens, the central overheads, head office overheads are allocated to different departments. But these central and fixed overheads which are centrally allocated are irrelevant because whether we have this job, whether we get this special contract or not, we would have to bear this cost either ways. What is relevant in fixed overhead is the fixed overheads which are specifically related to this job and these are just 20,000 so fixed overhead will just be 20,000 so if I add all these and minus this 10,000 I'm getting 900,000 and as usual if you build the company uh, the customer at 20% markup so what you can do is this 900,000 you just multiply by 1.2 so that becomes 1080000 so you think why earlier the customer rejected it they said that it is two expenses we built them 2 million and 40000 why because we never understood the concept of relevant costing if you do understand the concept of relevant costing see your quote is 1 million and 80000 so there's a huge difference between 2 million and 40 and 1 million and 80,000. So I suggest if you are an entrepreneur, you have your own business, you're working in a company, please apply concepts and principles of relevant costing so that you don't lose. Obviously, it will help you in your exam how to apply the principles of relevant costing for better decision making. If you have any questions or queries relating to relevant costing, feel free to leave a comment. I will reply to you as usual. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, 
please subscribe to my channel press the bell notification button so that you get my videos all the new videos on a timely basis and if you like this video please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit thank you so very much for your precious time love you all